Hey guys, welcome back to the fourth video in the jQuery slideshow uh, series. Um, I'm going to try and finish up with this video here, so I'm going to try and fly through everything. But if uh, I'm going to try and compile everything into a nice uh, zip file so you guys can download it and play around with it if you wanted to. Uh, it's probably not going to be perfect. Uh, there's a couple of things that I, I did skip out on, but um, it, you guys can modify it to, to however you need it. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do for a slideshow is height. Set that to 300 pixels. All right. So now if we save this and go back over here, we actually have uh, that height attribute is was needed to get this arrow to show up because this arrow was not uh, did not have a height. So it was trying to take the parent's height, which didn't have anything. So that's how we get that arrow to show up. So now if we go back over to our code and under slideshow, we want to add in that shadow. So we'll go ID shadow. And we'll give it a position of absolute background URL. Of dot slash images slash bottom shadow oops shadow dot png give it no repeat top and center it based on the div. So now we want to go set it to the bottom of the div and we want to go with a negative value because we're trying to push it below the div so it's got to be negative so if we were, if we would be positive it would actually moving up towards the top of the the div so we'll do minus 20 pixels and give it a height of 20 pixels and the last thing that we're going to do is designate a width I don't believe we have to do that but I'm going to do it anyways so there we go now if we switch back out here we have the nice shadow in our slideshow. Alright, so I'm going to copy this, the previous arrow. Actually, I'm going to copy both of these. And I'm going to create my set of next options with height. Okay, so now I'll just do right arrow. Whoops. And I got to change this to next. So now if I save that, I should have my second arrow. There we go. So now I've got both arrows in place. And the last bit that I need to do is add in my previous blue arrow. And I'm just going to copy uh, copy this previous arrow and just change the arrow to blue. And the last thing I'm going to do is change the name of the file. So now if I save that and I come back out here, whoops, refresh, that doesn't quite look right. So I've got to change this so that way the position is absolute. And same thing up here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste that. So now if I save that and refresh it should be lined up but it's still too tall so okay so I'm gonna get rid of float on previous arrow and see if that whoops clears this up now I'll be right back I'm just gonna figure out what's causing this to bump down Okay, I figured it out. Uh, what I forgot to do was add relative positioning. And again, that goes... Absolute positioning looks for the parent item and is trying to set the height or um, set its positioning based on its parent item. And now I'm just adding a pointer to uh, cursor to this item. So there. Now you'll see I got my arrows and if I mouse over them I get the nice pointer. The last thing I want to do 
to this blue is set my z index to negative one. Okay. So now I got my arrows looking correctly. My black arrow is on top of my blue arrow, and if I mouse over, then these come in. And what's going to happen is that blue arrow is not going to be visible until you mouse over it, and then it's going to fade up. So I'm going to switch back over. I'm going to copy this whole thing, previous blue, and I'm just going to paste it in as my next uh, next blue attribute. So I'm going to do right. So the file name's images right arrow blue PNG and change this and then I should be good to go. Come back out here, refresh. And again, I have the issue with a relative and cursor pointer. So I just got to replicate what I did with the uh, the first arrow. Oops. There we go. So now I have all my CSS styling correct. Now I'm just going to jump right into the JavaScript portion of it. And there actually isn't all that much that needs to be done. And I'm going to fly through this because I don't want to try and go into two videos. Um, I know that uh, Google has a 15 minute uh, time limit, so I'm, I'm probably going to hit that 15 minutes, but that's okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called timer, and this is going to be my timer that's going to be running to instantiate the different uh, the the different functions I'm going to be calling. And one of those functions is init slide, and all that this does is it sets the active item equal to whatever my rotator I gotta put a pound in there for an ID so any my ID of rotator dot photo the first whoops first thing in that list is gonna get set or active is gonna get set to that value and then timer is gonna get a set timeout value and it's going to, once that triggers, it's going to call next slide, and I'm going to be creating that next. And it's going to have a timer of speed. That's one thing I got to create up here. So var speed is going to equal 3000. So it's 3000 milliseconds for speed. So now function next slide. And then I'm going to do clear timeout so that way if this gets called, I'm going to pass in timer. If this gets called, when I click on the next slide, it's going to clear out the timeout and it's going to reset so that way it creates a new, um, a new timer. Otherwise, if I didn't do that, what's going to happen is I'm going to be getting triggers and they're just going to be building on top of each other and I don't want that. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a next variable. And next is going to equal... I'm going to use a ter uh, ternary operator, so active dot next, based on whatever if this statement is true. So active dot next dot photo. So if there's a value of photo in the next spot. So if whoops. So if active dot next dot photo length is greater than zero. So if there is something next in line, it's going to get active oops, dot next for the value. Otherwise, rotator, and it's actually just this right here. So rotator dot first. All right, and then active, whoops. So active dot fade out slow. Actually, slow would be the speed. I'm gonna do yeah, I'll just stick with slow. You can do slow, fast, you can leave it empty and it'll just resort uh, resort to the default. And then the next item is gonna fade in 
and that's going to be slow. These two should be the same so that way you don't have one fading out really quick and the other one fades in slowly. Um, they should be the same. So next and then I'm going to set my active item as equal to whatever the next value is. And timer is going to equal set timeout and I'm just going to call the same thing so that way it doesn't change. So set timeout. Next slide is going to get called again. And I'm going to save this and run it just to make sure that it does get run correctly. Okay. I don't think I actually instantiated. Yeah, I didn't init my slideshow. So init underscore slide. And if I refresh that. There we go. So now my slideshow is working correctly. Now I need to add a previous function. So I'm just going to copy the next slide since it's very similar and just do previous slide clear timeout active dot previous photo dot length greater than zero then active dot previous otherwise return rotator photo dot last or the last item in the list okay so now that should work no problem and the last thing I'm going to do is add my click functions and my hover functions to those items first thing I'm going to do is add my hover so I'm going to do oops, ID of previous and ID of next when either of those are hovered, I'm going to call a function and I'm going to create the hover takes two uh, parameters and both of them can either be functions or um, well I think they both have to be functions alright so I close that one and close out I'm just trying to fly through this because I have less than two and a half minutes left before I got to get this done. Okay, so now this dot find, and I'm going to be setting an additional class to each of my uh, previous and next um, blue buttons, and I'll get into that in a second. Uh, button dot fade in slow this dot find dot btn dot fade out slow so I'm going to test this really quick No, that's not that that's not working. Okay, I'm going to finish up this video. I'm going to start another one. This one's going to be the last one. It'll probably be four minutes long, if that. Um, so stay tuned for that video. Be sure be sure to subscribe. I know these videos always go on forever, but uh, hopefully I do a good job. I've gotten a lot of good feedback, and hopefully you guys can get some good use out of this and use it on your website. But uh, I'll see you guys back here in a few minutes. Be sure to subscribe and check out the next video.